Okay, see my hands. Right then, what I'd like to talk about is, I've got my little trusty box here. And what I'd like to talk about is ATCs. Yes, let's talk about ATCs because I love them. I love them a lot. Let's get all these out. Does anybody else like ATCs? Is the light all right? Oh, there's one that's not working. Come on, work. Hi, Jenny. Jenny, hi. Oh, you're in California. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> ATCs. I've th these are all the ones that I've got. I've got some that I've swapped and some that I've made myself. So I think these ones I've made myself and these ones that I've swapped with people. So um, what are ATCs? Uh, ATC stands for Artist Trading Card. I'm sure lots of you know that already, but in case you didn't know, um, yeah. And they were kind of invented in 1997 um, by an artist called M. Vancy Sternman, a Swiss artist. And um, he created 1,200 of these little cards. They're a set size. They're two and a half inches by three and a half inches. OK, and... Um, he made, yeah, 1,200 of them for his exhibition. And on the last day, he sort of offered that people could make their own and he would give them one of his own for to swap with someone else's. So um, that happened and everyone thought it was such a great idea that they did it all around the world and every artist, lots of artists did it after that. So it started in 1997. Um, yeah, so I've got some beautiful examples here. I've got some made by Jackie Jasper, some made by Max, some made by um, Brian and Philippa. There's, there's, I think that was Brian's, Brian's and Philippa's, that's Jackie Jasper's, Jackie Jasper, uh, that's just gorgeous, that's Mags, Mags loves her vintage look, so I've got some really nice ones, and then here's just a few that I've created, these are my more recent ones, and this is probably, I think that's about the first one I ever did, actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's funny looking back at them now, 2017. <laughs> okay, I'll shove these to one side and I will bring in my cutting mat so I could work on that. Let's bring that in. Horrible blue mat. Well, I suppose it's a nice blue. So, how are we, how are we doing? Oh, how do you... How do you pronounce your name? Cory Corrig? You're from the Netherlands. Hi. I might not have said your name right, <laughs> but welcome. OK, so let's make some ATCs ourselves, shall we? The whole idea of these are they're kind of off cuts of um, things that you've um, made or uh, backgrounds that you haven't used, things like that really. And I have a box, well it's like a book box, big book box, and in here I have got all my like backgrounds and pieces that, experimental pieces in here. I did some marbling, got some marbling examples, got some backgrounds, some cut out pieces, I couldn't throw that away. I kept everything really. Some inking, stamping, all sorts of things. So, um, a bit of um, 
jelly plate printing as well. Don't throw anything away, it's all useful. So I thought I would start using up some of this, these bits and bobs. So to start with, I have these um, that I've kept. And I thought I'd quickly make some ATCs out of these. Now these are um, three separate stamps that I was going to create in a card, but I realised I didn't quite get it centrally, or the inking hasn't quite worked as well as I liked. Um, and I tried different colours as well. So I rather like this one, because the inking's better in that one. So we'll experiment with that one. And what you need to do before you start making your ATCs is to give yourself a template. I had one somewhere. A template that measures two and a half by three and a half inches. And also a brilliant idea is to create a frame of that measurement as well. So this is quite handy to draw round areas and this is lovely to view an area that you'd like to cut out so that's quite handy so I might go for like this cottage and just take this out of this background grab a pencil draw around it and I'm just going to yeah take this out and then use it and create an ATC from it. Does anyone make ATCs? Have they done swapsies before? Hi Jan! Oh uh, yeah, I, I kind of like to do ATCs when I've got no other sort of crafting to do and I, I kind of want to revisit what I've done, those backgrounds and things. It's fun revisiting them. They're all memories as well. I said cut that out and I just have a play and um, create these little pieces of artwork. Okay, I'd like to use um, craft card as a backing. So what I've done is I've cut a piece of craft card the same size. So this is now going to be too big because I'd like a little bit of a frame around it so I can just trim that to size. I need to look at the comments. Serena, hi Serena. That's it and a little bit down this side and they're quick to make really or you can take longer with it and enjoy the, the process of um, building up these little pieces of artwork. I like to have a few sort of in, stored away in case someone does want to say, oh, do you fancy doing an ATC swap? And then I can say, yeah. Okay, so that's that. So that looks great, I think, on its own. And I've, I've like focused on the cottage now without everything else that was around it. So I'm just going to keep this quick and simple. And um, I've got this bag. This bag of um, string and thread. I've actually got a bag like this for lots of different colours. So I've got... Um, this is my brown one. And I've got embroidery thread, string, all sorts, ribbons, all sorts in here. So I'll use, I'll use this nice fine ribbon. That's it. And let's um, attach this to the back. Actually, let's tie a little cute bow. Let's tie a little cute bow in it. I haven't done a Facebook Live for a little while, actually. It's, it's quite nice to do one this afternoon. So, um, yeah, thank you for joining me so right then tiny little bow I mean this kind of mimics the card that I created from this design okay and I'll probably place that let's see I can do it up the side or I can do it along the bottom 
I think along the bottom because there's extra space there. So I like to put some of this running tape along the bottom because things like string and ribbon stick to it quite quite well. Right, I need to get my bow in the position I want. The loops up, I think. Let's have the loops up and then just hide that round there. And then it will stick to it if I put that in the right place. That's it. And then I can cut that. Make sure it's tight enough. Make it quite taut. And then add some glue to the back. And I like reusing things. I like adding little bits that I've kept. I mean, sometimes I keep sort of embellishments as well that I haven't used. It's not just backgrounds. I've, I've got another little box where I keep some embellishments. Because you do, you know, you can th end up throwing away a lot of these nice little things, especially if you do lots of card making and mixed media. Right, I'm just gonna pop a little bit extra glue underneath there where the string is. Hold that down. You can have a look at some of these while I'm crafting away. <laughs> I love the fact that you, you know they come in all different styles as well. Look at that black and white one, sort of geometric one. That's really nice. That's mags. And then I'm just going to add a little blob of glue under the bow just to hold that in place there and then you write on the back of them usually they have a title and a date that you created it and the person's name who created it and also perhaps who you swapped with as well so you can also add the person you swapped with so you know who you've swapped with because the idea as well that you make perhaps a few of them, I kind of make three. Some people make sort of six or just two. I like to make three because I think three look nice as well together. So I think that's about it. I think that will do. Let's keep my template, put my string back. And I have already made this morning, I've made... Um, two more because I had quite a few of those <laughs> stamped stamped images so I've got this one in the sort of other colourway as well yeah so there's three there and I think they look really nice together photograph them together yeah can you see that perhaps I should zoom in a little bit oh <laughs> Let's see if I can zoom in a bit. Just a little bit there. <laughs> so, and I've created them with not much fuss because I haven't done the stamping and the inking. I've just basically spent some relaxing time cutting out and finding some string to go with them. And that's kind of nice crafting, I think. Nice relaxing crafting. Okay, I'll put them to one side. And let's experiment with some more, shall we? I did want to have a look at the marbling paper that I had. Some of this marbling paper. I'll get some of that out. Oh, so I've got lots of this. Um, and then I was thinking, what can I do with this? What could go, what could go with that? And um, what I discovered was, or what I found as well in my embellishment bits and bobs, are um, this lovely pencil stamp that I'd been working with. And I couldn't, I couldn't even throw these bits away. I just think it's brilliant. And I just thought, well, I could do my, more of a graphic style. Um, oh, I've got some more over here. Oh, these are my more favourite pieces more of a graphic style 
um, ATC. And what I did was I did cut, I did, I've already started that one. I did cut this one out and I've trimmed it to the height of an ATC. I thought I'd place it this way. So I've got that and then I started offering up this to my backgrounds and seeing which one looked looked better, what colourway. Um, I needed it to show up. So um, I kind of went for this sort of colour I quite liked. And sort of, it reminded me of sort of swirling crayons really, this sort of swirly pattern. And I did pick out this one, quite liked this one. So let's get rid of that. And then you can use your frame, place this there as well. You can use your frame to offer up whereabouts you'd like it. It kind of looks like a sun, doesn't it? I can see a bit of a sunset going on there <laughs> with that piece is so round but let's try that way but I kind of would like it to look like this so I might go for something like that I think, oh I like that wiggly line that's got movement oh I quite like that so I need to place that under there just to see exactly where it's going so I might even give it a bit you know slide this back a bit let's go for about there yeah so I'm going to draw around that and cut this piece out hi Amanda hello hi Jan Angela hello hi everyone so, yeah, I'm playing with ATCs. I'm making my own out of scraps and pieces that I've kept for years. Yep. So if anyone wants to do an ATC swap, maybe, maybe privately message me. Okay. that on there. I like to put it on with foam pads just to raise it up a bit. Let's, before I do that let's just offer it up to see exactly where I'd like it. I think about there. So I'm just going to trim down there. Yeah that's nice. And put some foam pads. So has anyone done has anyone done a swap? You found me! I had trouble starting anyway. I was a bit late starting. I was getting filters on my face. I ended up with a moustache. I thought, ah, that's no good. Okay. And it's nice to see how other people craft, isn't it? What products they use, what their favourite equipment. I'm a big fan of the scalpel, as you can see. Scalpel and ruler, I don't have a guillotine. And I do like my glue stick. Love a glue stick. Right. Yeah, it does look like the sun, doesn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, thanks, Serena. I think that'll do. Let's take the backs off. Yeah, it's a lovely opportunity to use up things. What a great idea. And it's all came about from this guy deciding to swap his little pieces of artwork at the end of his e exhibition. What I need is an ATC die. That's what I need. So I don't have to even sort of measure. I can just perhaps die cut things. Okay, let's put that in there. Yes, like that. Let's put 
protruding a little bit off the side so I'll just give that a trim and the back of course the back's messy so I've cut another piece of just plain copier paper to put on the back so I'll glue this on I like to be neat okay oh somebody from France hello wow we've got California France I'm in Milton Keynes brilliant bring them on camera Am I crafting off the camera? Sorry if I am. I have to keep an eye on what I'm doing. So, um, right then. I like a little caption on that. So, I have got some scrap pieces of card here. And I'll just draw a couple of guidelines. And get a fine liner pen. Go in my pen drawer. Go for the fine. And swap these about so you can look at some more. And I'm going to just write draw on there, I think. Just write draw in a sort of sketchy, quick way. Cut that out. The comments keep disappearing. Oh, don't worry about being late. It's nice to have you, Rianne. Hi, hi, Carol. I'm playing with ATCs. Welcome. Joining the fun. So I've cut out my little hand-drawn caption and we shall put this, let's just snip a little bit more off of it and I need to rub out the pencil mark That's it. and I'll just stick it on with glue. So it is that, that way up isn't it, so where am I going to put this? Want it there? Mm, in there like that. I might try and cut it shorter and then just slot it down there. Yeah, that'll be fine. Glue that on. Down there. So, I've used up my marbled background. So, yeah, that's that one. And I've made a couple more as well to go with that. So, we've got one this way up. And I've used, picked a piece where the markings are going more vertical. And I've put illustrate along there. And then I had another idea. This one, I've cut out the pencils individually and stuck them on randomly and added a sketch word. And even with these pieces, I, I still can't throw that away. <laughs> so that's going back in my scrap box. <laughs> uh, yeah, they look quite striking. A bit sort of um, pop artish looking, I think. So that's them. So we'll put them to one side and let's play with another one, shall we? So these bits here, these are embossed using embossing folder and I was playing around with inking the folder before I ran it through my machine. Um, and sometimes these, these little experiments take a few efforts, don't they, to, to get the effect that you're after. 
so um, I didn't really wasn't so keen on these um, but I like this one this one's perfectly good enough to make an ATC set out of so these flying swallows I've had this for ages actually so um, I'm not sure whether I want that bit so yeah move your frame around till you see the area that you like so I, I think I quite like it down here so it's light at the bottom and goes up darker but I've got this bird that's got the sort of mottly mess on it but what I could do is I could maybe cut another one out and add it on the top and then that would give me my uh, dimension and it would be nice to make one of the birds stand out wouldn't it so let's do that I have been spending all day thinking about this I must admit I haven't, I haven't got such a quick mind that, oh, that I know exactly what I'm going to do <laughs> all the time. Oh, thanks, Ryan. Glad you like them. I've had to make three ATC books soon as birthday gifts, so you need some inspiration. Oh, hopefully this will help. I like your frame idea. Yes, it's great. I kind of... We did this in art um, way back when I was at school. Actually, we had to, uh, we had the two um, ninety degree frames that you could sort of move in and out. This is obviously a fixed one because I want the ATC size. But and it, even when you hold up, um, if you're going to paint a landscape or view, you could use this these two ninety degree frames to move. And sort of organise where you're going to the view that you're going to paint. So I thought, yeah, let's let's do that for my ATCs as well. So I'm going to cut one of the hand cut one of these birds out. That is the right one, isn't it? Oh no, it isn't. Look, his head's going the other way. Ah. So, oh, I see. I've used it upside down because all of these are going that way. They are as well. Oh no, there must be one. There must be one with its... Oh no, it is right. It is right. It's me. It's been a long day, hasn't it? It's me. I don't know what I was looking at then. Hmm. For some reason I saw it going the other way. So I'll cut this out and I think I might colour it instead of leaving it white I think I'll colour it just to make it pop and stand out and we've got a lot of purple there so I think I might choose like a turquoise to colour it I think I might just ink it so I'll bring in my little inks choose which one that would go that's it probably might have to be peacock feathers mightn't it peacock feathers I think and to find out if that is going to go then we can always just yeah Oop. oh no it's landed upside down that's my template let's put it on a scrap piece of paper peacock feathers yep so let me just neaten up the ends of the wings and the tail like that and let's get my pads and the tool, I've got 
got a little box here and in here I've got lots of ink pads with different initials for the different ones. I have got quite a few peacock feathers. They're kind of in order so I know where to go to to find it. So I'll put that on my tool. That's it. And give my swallow a bit of a brush with ink. I think I'll go quite dark, I think. I want him to stand out. I'll just grab a piece of paper to hold the other side so I don't get ink on my finger. There, blue swallow, turquoise swallow. Let's just see what he looks like. So it's that there. Yay, I like that. He stands out. Yes, that'll be nice. Make him stand out even more by putting him on some foam pads. Oh, that's a bit big. Let's cut these up. I like to slice them with my scalpel so they're the right size. And I just want another little long piece to go down the tail. That's it. So we've got our background, our focal point. Definitely have a focal point. Is that going to be enough? Or would we like to add something else? There he goes. I am tempted, I am tempted to round corner it actually, because I think that might look quite sweet. So let's give it some round corners, some tight round corners. Yeah, gives it a different look. Don't have to be square. Yeah, I like that. Um, it's quite flimsy because it's on paper and I've got the embossed backing so I need I need something to put on the back so I've cut out a stiffer piece of card and I'll round corner that before I stick these together because this is quite a thick piece of card if I'd if I'd have glued it on and then round cornered both pieces together that might have been a little bit more trickier to do so that's what I do. I never glue anything down. I never glue anything down till I'm really sure and I'm happy with what I'm doing. Because it is far easier to round corner the two separate pieces than them when they're glued together. That's it. Backing's a tiny bit bigger, so I'll just trim that. Me being super neat that off. I think it might need something else. I do kind of like something to read. A word. I just think it sort of explains it a bit more I think. It's a bit at the top I want to trim as well. So let's do a little caption for it. So I need a scrap piece of card again. Oh, it's gone, it's gone missing. Uh, use this piece. And again, draw my guidelines. That's it, and I'll pencil in the word glide I think let's move that out pencil in the word glide and I'll do some lead ins and some lead outs I've got some brush pens uh, let's go for the thin one and then just add 
start off thick and come in thin. Brush pen my glide. And then I'll come out and end up going fatter again. I'm going to have this going all the way across, all the way across. Um, and here's one that I spent a little more time doing. It's a little bit neater, I think. So I'm going to use this one. And I'll cut it out evenly as well. And then I might go for it up near the bird, actually. I might pop it up there. I could go over to that side. Of, I should go central. Over there or central? Slightly over there, I think. Yeah. Looks quite interesting over there. Have I still got you all with me watching? I have. Arbu. Arbu. Lynn, hello. Gillian. Hi, Gillian. Oh, thanks for popping in and seeing us. That's great. I miss you. I miss you, Jill. Jill's so funny. She's so amusing. I like Jill. I miss her. So I'll put that there. And I might have to continue that, that line a bit more to go fatter with it. That's good. Glue that on. Then that's job done I think for that one and like the others I have made two more to go with it they're still not quite square so let me just put some of this stuff away So I have got some other slightly different backgrounds as well, these two bits as well. Still I can't put these in the bin, but I'm gradually using it up. Put that back in the box. So I've got this one. I have made a fly. I've got a mark on there now. Where's that come from? Isn't that annoying? There, a fly, and I've kind of done the lettering to match, um, sort of floaty lettering, and then this one saw. So, I might have them like that together. Yeah, I'm pleased with them. They're interesting. So that's another set. So that's them. And then, what's the time? How's the time going? Have I got, would you like to see another one? Shall I do another one? I'll do a more vintagey one this time, I think. I've got this little piece of nice pale inked background. And what I had was this leaf. Um, I don't know why I ended up cutting it out, actually. I actually had two of these. They were for a project. I think I was going to use more than one, but I ended up using one. And it's so nice because it's got copper heat embossing on it. So that definitely wasn't going to go in the bin. But let's make an ATC out of it. So where's the template? Oh, I haven't used it, have I? I'll use this instead. Maybe we can do. Oh, no, I haven't used my template. Okay, so I quite like, the colours are similar as well. I didn't make it together, but um, yeah, quite like that pink colour. I might go for about there, I think. Let's do that. And cut this one out. Let's go for more vintage style this time. Might lose that. There. So, what are we going to 
going to do let's layer up some goodies that I've got in my scraps uh, shall I throw that away? I think I'm, mm, I don't know, I can still punch butterflies out of it. No, I'll keep it. <laughs> the bin that way or the box this way, so it'll go in the box. Okay. What I thought I'd do is, like, uh, use half of the leaf. Um, so, yeah, let's use half the leaf. And then I can use the other half for another one. And it'll be a different way around, so that'll be quite nice. So let's use this one. I might just cut the top down a bit. And what I like to do is a bit of distressing. So let's distress the edges with my scissors. Run the scissors through. Ruffle up the edge. I'm kind of going for shabby chic sort of vintage rather than old vintage going for some prettier colours but still a sort of vintage look for sizing actually what I did think was I'd quite like to back it in craft card because I'm distressing this edge it might be nice to have a border around so I've cut my piece of craft card to match but this is the same size isn't it so I do need to trim it slightly so I don't measure anything, I'll just make a mark with my scalpel where I want to trim. And then I'll just trim that in that way. That's it, that should do. So I'll pull up these edges. Come on, where's the comments? You're still here, yay! Oh, ha I love your handwriting. No, Kim, I don't actually. <laughs> I don't really. I could just do a bit of brush lettering. That isn't really my handwriting. Brush lettering is more of an art form, isn't it, really? And it take a lot longer doing it. But my handwriting is pretty messy. Okay, that's nice, like that. So I've got that, I've got my leaf there, and let's layer up some nice things. So I have got this, some lace. So if you, if you do vintage, it's nice to have lace and ribbon. So oh, I get a piece of lace. So add that. And I shall put that on with some glue. A piece of glue. So that can go on there. Let's have it that way around. I'm going to glue these layers up because I know exactly what I'm doing because I have planned it. Otherwise, I'll be offering up bits and bobs, which I spent ages doing. I love it. I love deciding what's going where. I spent ages doing it. So there was, I really didn't think that you'd be interested in watching me do that. <laughs> I do love that aspect of crafting though, I must admit. So you can just enjoy it coming together more quickly. So I've got my lace. Um, what I discovered was a vellum. I've got some scrap pieces of vellum. Vellum looked quite nice over the lace. It kind of shows it up a bit more, if anything, doesn't it? I quite liked that that look, so I'll use this piece. I do like vellum for layering things up, especially sort of this sort of shabby chic vintage look. If we're going to have ripped edges and distressing, then they all need to be ripped. Edges. I can't be doing with straight edges if I've gone down the ripped edge route. So I'll add that. Maybe I'll just rip a little bit more off just so I can see it poking over to the right so I don't cover it all. Yeah, that'll do. 
So the leaf can go on top of there. I shall add the leaf. I'm so glad I kept these bits now. I remember the project that I used it on as well. Jeez, it is memories. It's nice. That was another Facebook Live, actually. <laughs> That's right. I did a leaf-inspired card. And if you're wondering what I did with it, I have actually got a YouTube channel called Sue Smith Creative Design. And it'll be on there under my... Uh, Facebook Lives um, grouping of videos so please do please do go and have a look at my leaf inspired card that I use this leaf for okay uh, ribbon I've got this gorgeous organza green ribbon it's such a lovely green beautiful green sagey muted green so that's perfect for this and also i've had this ages some people might even recognize it do crafts paper mania vintage notes lace borders i've loved this so much i couldn't bear to use it that's why i've still got it <laughs> oh what a nightmare do you ever like purchase things that you really like and then you can't use them <laughs> Oh gosh. Oh, question from Carol. Are ATCs usually made and swapped in threes? No, no, Carol. As long as you, well, you don't even have to, you just have to make one. If you just make one and say, okay, I'm going to swap this. Does anyone want it? Give me one of yours. And then trouble is it goes then and then you've lost what you did. So I kind of make two or three at least so that I can swap one and keep one. So this is one I did a while ago now, um, out of some little embellishments. Um, so I made two of these, so I've still got it and I can still remember doing it. And I've written on the back who I've swapped it with as well and the number. That's right, you write the number of them as well. So yeah, So and I, I've, I, I like them so much I wanted to collect you know, ones that I've made as well. So there's, there's a bit of my brush lettering. Oh, that was ages ago. <laughs> it makes me laugh because um, I could do it a little bit better now than when I did that. <laughs> yeah, so this one's really nice. I like this one. This one's from Jackie Jasper. I like, it's well designed, this one. I really like the design of it. Which way up does it go? Let's go that way. Or a bit, I can't like it that way. Yeah, it's just nice, you know, to use your embellishments and little pieces, bits and pieces that end up in the bin. Okay, so I've got some book binding glue. So yeah, you make as many as you like. Make as many as you like. I think the in America they do um, something similar and it's called, what is it called? Uh pocket something oh does anyone know and they they make um like an a4 sheet and i think they buy an a4 sheet with perspex sort of pockets in it and they make like 12 i think to fit in all these pockets what do they call them pocket oh i can't remember oh which bit of lace can i use so I'm going to bring myself to use it now. Let's use this bit. And if I use my precious things, then I can keep it. Well, this one anyway. Why am I cutting it with those scissors? Do the right scissors. That's it. Let's cut this on an angle. Anyone knows what those pocket things are? It is a great way of using up small pieces from your scrapbooks. Uh, oh, that's bugging me now what they're called. 
But yeah, they make like 12. I think they might be smaller size as well. So, I'll spare a little bit of my precious lace to put on here. So, it's layering up quite nicely now. I like the layers, lots of layers. And what else I'd like to do is add a little bit of blingy thread. I've got this little tiny bit left. And hopefully, I can thread it round. Ooh. Mm. That's going to be tight. I wanted to do it three times. I don't think I've got any more. Mm. It was just a little bit from my bag. I don't think I've got any more. It's okay. We can use it twice. Put that instead. Should I use that instead? This nice silky embroidery skein. Uh, no, I quite like the shiny glittery one. Let's use that. I'll just have to go around twice with it. Doesn't matter. up to the back and it's going to wrap it round this way oh actually oh no oh what I could do I could be really really um, frugal is that the word I wonder if this is gonna help cut it at the back so I don't waste it round the back hey that might do it It's tight, but doable. Yes, yes. Actually, I want to do it. Let's go around the bottom with it. Straight around the bottom, that's it. Okay. So, see what it looks like. Yeah, that's nice. I quite like elements going up and down and then a little bit um, the other way horizontal just balances it I think and then I've got this bit fanning out uh, another another element for fanning out if I bring in my bag I've got this nice thick string the other end straighter let's cut a bit of that off and I'm going to fan this out into more delicate Fronds. Fan that out. Oh, we've reached the hour, haven't we? We've reached the hour. Right. I've got book binding glue here. This is really good. Quite good for this sort of thing. It's quite good at sticking to fabric. That's it. I'll make that a bit shorter so that I've got different layers. See, I've protruded um, over the top and the bottom with my elements. Snip these at different levels. That's okay. I think that's okay. Just extending beyond the measurements of two and a half by three and a half. That quite as long. That's it. Just to add a bit more texture there. And then I've also got these bits of embossing panels that goes on that glue. And I've got a butterfly punch. Butterflies are quite nice just to plonk or place in certain positions and bring things to life. So I've got this one that I don't like so much, so what I'm going to do is punch one of those and one that I do like to use for the top. And I might be fussy where I punch it so that 
it looks like the butterfly's got a centerpiece. Yeah, that's nice. I'll punch two because I want the wings to fold up. I don't like a white back underneath. So I'm just going to back these. Just so if they did lift up, then you won't see the white card underneath. Everything's covered in little bits of string. Right, we've got Kathy joining us. Hi, Kathy. Insert pocket sheets. Yeah, that's what they were. Yes. And I think I'll add vellum on top of that as well. Let's punch a vellum butterfly. I do like a butterfly punch. I must admit. So that can bring in the vellum aspect again. And then I won't glue the vellum. I will staple it. Staples are quite nice, aren't they? When you're doing a vintage look. That's it, that's nice. And then that can that can go on there. Add a bit of glue. Actually, before I put that, I think I'm ready to stick this to the back. So I'll do that. I'll stick it to my back. I like having two layers because it gives you the opportunity to wrap things round. That's really handy. And then you've got a neat back then. Especially to do your, your writing. There. Pop the butterfly on. And then we better finish. His wings are going to go over the edge as well. That's all right poke them up and then they won't so much then will they oh another thing I did that was a little bit uh, sad is that the right word is that I've got another bag of bits of look this bag this bag here bits of book paper that I've that's waste really that I've cut up all these little bits I can't throw these out either so what I did was I painstakingly read them <laughs> for a specific kind of word I wanted that related to this ATC. Something like love or beautiful, something like that. And I did find some. I did find some words. I'm just going to cut this down a bit. And I found it and I backed it onto craft card. And here it is, designer. Isn't that cute? I didn't take long to find it, actually. Well, I wasn't specifically looking for desire, obviously, but a word that suited. So you don't have to have nice handwriting. You can just look for book words. Should I put it there? Yeah, let's put it on the inside. Or if you've got a stamp that's got a few words on it, like little word, leading words, say happy or something, because I like happy birthday, then just use the happy. There, that's nice. That's nice. I like this nice texture. Texture, it's nice. Sort of vintagey look. Yeah. So it's another sort of idea just to layer up your laces and your ribbons that you've got in your stash all right i'm going to clear up now and conclude let's get rid of the mat so it looks, they look nice on my table and then we'll have another look at our artist trading cards so we have this one oh the other two to match this is this one going the other way oh bling a bit of bling i've got some nice copper gems little domes and this one can i find it I don't think I can find them. I'll have to find them and add them. So this one says appreciation. 
I found that word and this one says glory glory yeah and then I'm going to add some domes to this one when I find them so yeah nice little pieces of artwork so background a bit of a topper that you've done layer up some lace punch butterfly that's that one and then what did we do and then we created a background from just some embossing folder they're not used enough I don't think embossing folders just pick out one of the elements add a color a different color add a caption and then we've got our sort of pop art colorful pencils or any other good stamp that's black and what looks good black and white just stamp it cut it out and put it on one of your fancy backgrounds and then we've got our cottage or just an element picked out of a bigger design so there's four different ways there that you can you know create your ATCs from your leftover bits and you know other people have done similar things that's a similar concept isn't it that's sort of a similar con concept just added a number this one maybe a bit similar to that one and then just picking out an, a scene I don't know if I've got one like that I don't know if I've got one like that I suppose this one this one's sort of cut out of a bigger pattern and then embellished nicely and then this one's got a spare topper as well yeah so you know enjoy enjoy your ATCs and have fun with them and um, yeah and swap swap and enjoy other people's little pieces of artwork yeah well thank you for joining me um, I hope you got some inspiration there and thanks yeah thanks for watching and see you again soon enjoy the rest of your evening bye bye